Hello once again, and welcome to episode 8 of my mini virtual pinball build. No live stream shenanigans this week. Nope, just a solid week of building things I didn't expect to have to build. This week's mistake is a doozy, and it's a mistake that basically cost me a week of work, more or less. But we will get to that a bit later. I know, I'm such a tease, but YouTube likes it when I make you watch the whole episode. I've decided not to put a topper screen on the top. This could change again in the future and it's something I would like to do. But for now, I really want to concentrate on the basic cabinet. It also means I only need six power points inside the cabinet instead of a really awkward seven. I don't have room to mount a six way power strip in the base cabinet, but I realize there's a nice space behind the back glass screen. that It's not being used for anything else. It's a little tight depth wise, but I can be creative with the door I put in to accommodate any power bricks that stick out too far. I'm mounting this ply board to the visa mounts on the screen. That section of the monitor is only held on with duct tape right now. I'll have to make sure that I reinforce this with epoxy later. It's on there pretty tight, but I don't want a chance of it being dragged off in the future. As I thought, the big power brick in the middle is going to hit the inside of the door. When I come to make the door, I'll route out a section to go around it. The plunger that I bought from China, made of finest chinesium, has a small problem. The spring it came with was ridiculously heavy. It would smash against the cabinet when released and made such a loud bang that I took the spring off and chopped it in half. Even then it was still too urgent. I ordered some pinball parts from a real pinball supplier, more on that later, and picked up a lighter spring. Removing this C-clip is a pain. It doesn't have holes in the ends like a normal spring clip so I grabbed it with two pairs of pliers and yanked it off. That seems to do the trick, but I know it will be a matter of time before I launch it across the room and never see it again. You can see the chopped in half spring here. It's a very heavy spring steel. And here we have the new one, which appears much lighter. Let's see what difference it makes. Getting the clip back on is easier, and just in the hand the action feels far better. It really doesn't need to be so strong for my purposes. The ball will be virtual and they weigh almost nothing. Right, a comparison. First, the new spring. It feels so much better. I can easily pull the plunger back with a light grip. That was a big problem with the other spring as the plunger is fixed to the potentiometer inside and pulling back a heavy spring made it hard to pull back straight, which would twist against the mechanism inside, potentially causing stress on that delicate part. And now the old spring. It doesn't appear to be very different on camera, but it feels a million times better and I couldn't be happier with it. The other parts I got in the post were some very nice looking real pinball table legs. I bought some slightly longer ones as I knew my table was not as deep as a real pinball table, but after balancing the table on a stool and some wood at the correct height I realised I had miscalculated quite badly. The lower mounting bolt was not going to be inside the machine. You can almost hear the disappointment. It took me a while to recover from this and make a plan, but a plan I made. I would go ahead and fix the top bolt into the cabinet as low as I could and below the base I'd build some corner extensions to enable the legs to be fixed there. I had no idea how well it would work but I had very little choice but to try. The first thing I did was to print this corner drill guide. I modified a model I found on Thingiverse, link in the description of the original. The original had a much bigger hole than I needed for some reason. I realise now that they must have put some kind of metal sleeve in there to guide the drill, but I went with just a hole the right size. I will say now this didn't work out very well. The guide slid around on the corner. It was very hard to hold still under the pressure of the drill trying to move it around. 
I think it would be better if it was much bigger and had a flat surface at the right angle to enable it to be clamped to the corner somehow. But holding it in place with your hand does very little. By the way, drilling into the corner of MDF is a nightmare. The bit wanders all over the place. The inside of the legs is not a perfect right angle. There's a small radius so I need to remove the corner of the cabinet where it will be against the leg. A small block plane is the best tool for this, even my extra cheap and nasty one. I knocked off the corner all the way up the edge and took some extra where the leg would mount. Now I need to make the extensions. I spent some time cutting a nice shape which I would use as a template for all the other parts so that everything matched nicely. Each extension would have three parts. Two of these side pieces, one long and one short, to make a corner and a floor piece that would connect to the base of the cabinet. This is 18mm MDF and not incredibly strong for this purpose. I knew this going in and was prepared to switch to a hardwood if this didn't look like it would be strong enough. That's all the long sides done, next I need four more but 18mm shorter. Before I could fix these to the base I needed to remove as much paint as possible. Wood glue is quite weak against painted surfaces and these need to be as strong as I can make them. To give as much gluing surface area as I could make, I made a floor section to each extension. This would be glued and brad nailed to the other two parts and then all of that would be glued and bolted to the floor of the cabinet. I was hoping and praying all these gluing surfaces would be strong enough to take the pressure of the leg mounting.
My trusty old T-nuts would give me a very strong fixing through the floor. This would supplement the glue joint. I'm hogging out some material in this corner as I have limited room for the bolt to come through from the outside. A pesky stray brad nail. This won't be the only one I run into building these. I managed to seriously blunt two chisels and a force a bit on these. I even reverted to my oldest and worst chisel just so I didn't ruin any more tools. I drilled the bolt holes before I mounted these to the cabinet. It wouldn't matter too much if they weren't exactly right. The holes can be elongated later. The bolt won't actually be threaded into the MDF so making a bigger hole won't hurt. I screwed the bolt part way through the extension and lined it up with the edges of the cab. A light tap with a hammer gave me a nice mark to drill to. Again it won't matter too much if this isn't right, I can make these bigger. The bolt inside will have a large washer and the whole thing will be glued in place anyway. Plenty of glue on these, I don't want any chance of any part of this not having good contact. Wood glue doesn't mind if you put on a bit too much, as long as it's clamped really well while it dries. You'll see most of that squeeze out anyway. The first clamp I use is the bolt from the inside. This would probably do a great job all by itself, but I also fling a sash clamp on there too. I just nicked a corner of that piece, a little glue and some painter's tape and you'll never know. Ah, oh, that's disgusting. I'll need a flat surface behind this corner for the bolt fixing to be mounted against. I have some pine that's been ripped at 45 degrees which I cut into sections and glue in place. After I can drill through these when the glue dries ready for mounting the leg plates. I ended up doing this inside the cabinet too.
I cut the leg fixing plates in half and mounted half on the inside of the cab and half underneath. It's worked out really well. It's stronger than I imagined MDF could be and looks pretty good too. I had intended to paint these black to match the leg, but instead I think I'll paint them the same as the rest of the cab. I'd made a little bit of a mess of my order from a UK pinball parts supplier as well as the wrong amount of bolts I need eight and I only ordered four. I forgot to order the leg levelers so I ended up paying three lots of postage. I contacted the company and the guy that runs it got back to me really quickly and cut me a small break on the final postage cost. He didn't have to do that as it was totally my fault. I'll leave a link in the description to their website. I'm still waiting for the levelers but I do now have all of the legs fitted and the first time I saw it standing there like a proper pinball table I had a fairly large grin on my face let me tell you. And as soon as it was on its feet I couldn't wait to get the insides back inside. I worked really hard this week on the legs and it was a struggle at times. It's never easy when you get an unexpected bump in a project, but it's always extra satisfying when you overcome that hurdle. I still have a long way to go though. Outstanding jobs include the coin door, this will need designing and 3D printing. The two back doors, the back glass one will be fairly simple, although slightly complicated by the need for a fan and the route out for that plug. The main cabinet door needs to be easily accessible so something hinged with a catch. I need to make a rail for the playfield glass to be mounted on and a neat way to have the glass meet at the top and the bottom. Oh, I also need to buy the glass. I need to make or source speaker covers and finally I need to make it pretty. That means tea moulding, painting, rubbing down, painting again a few times and then painting the art on the sides and the front. And once all of that is done, I need to work out how all of the front end software works and get that configured. A lot to get through, should keep me busy for a while. But that's enough for this week. It's time to say goodbye again. I'll refrain from begging you to click buttons and following me on the, all the social medias. I'm sure you know what to do by now. It's not like you need a fancy animated icon popping up on your screen enticing you to do things you would have otherwise not even considered. Like and subscribe. That wasn't creepy at all, was it?